Hey, what is up everyone, Norman from Future Studio University here, and welcome to another video in our RetroVet series. Now in this video, we are going to fix what we have done wrong in the last 20 videos, which you should never do in your project, and that is not creating a sustainable RetroVet client. So let's get into it. All right, so what I meant in the introduction so here we are in the code for the very first batch of that video for the getting started. And what we have done since then is we have over and over declared these four or five lines of code. So we have created a new retrofit builder and based on the builder we have created a new retrofit um, client or object and then got our client. And this is fine if you just have one activity with one um, there's one network call, but real apps use more than one. They share different calls. Um, so you have like five activities and everyone uh, talks to a different API. So what you should do is have one retrofit client which serves all of these um, network requests. And this is what you do when you need to create a sustainable retrofit client. So only then you can share the object, so less memory usage for your app, but also smart network things like hashing um, and so on from Retrofit. So let me show you how you can create a sustainable Retrofit client um, on this little example, but basically it would work the same for every um, app, even if it has 20 um, activities. And All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new class. So we're going to say um, class, and it's going to be, we're going to name it um, Service Generator with just the name we chose um, back then. So I'm going to, yeah, let's add it to git, and I'm going to move it to the second view over here. Uh, let me make the code a little bit bigger for you. And let me close this view. So what the service generator should do, it should provide these lines for us to any um, part of the app that needs to, so to any component, to any activity. So I'm going to copy this over here. And next we're going to make this static. And we make this static so it's just one instance for the entire app. All right, so as you can see, we have broke the code over here because we, in the past, accessed the retrofit object and now it's uh, in the service generator, so central. So what we need to do, we need to make this line of code or the functionality of this line of code accessible over here. So let's do that. So let's create a public static method which returns the GitHub client. And let's call it uh, create service since it's a service generator. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this over here. We're going to make this return. And we're going to call this over here, but on the source generator. All right. And oh, pause up. now we have centralized the retrofit object. Now, this works if you only have the GitHub API, but in many cases, if you have different clients, maybe your app talks to GitHub and Stack Overflow, or maybe your own API and a different external third party API. So what you want is that this call right here is not fixed on only the GitHub client. You want to have a dynamic um, version of it so you can call with any client, with any endpoint from Retrofit, and it will create the appropriate client for you. So let's make this method here more dynamic. So the way you make it more dynamic is with generics. So we're going to call this with a generic, um, let's call it S, but now you need to pass this GitHub client. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this back over here. We're going to say create a service for my GitHub um, client class. And now we can Say, so, okay, we expect a client with the type S, and let's call this, um, yeah, let's just say a service class. And obviously, we need to pass it on here. 
So what we have now done is to make this whole thing dynamic. So if we have multiple activities which talk to different um, APIs, and thus we have not only one GitHub client, we have different clients, we can use the same method um, to create our client. And we have the retrofitter object shared in one, um, one class. So there's only one builder object for the entire app. And so the networking is shared and it gives you a bunch of additional performance um, benefits. So it's really useful to have this, not just out of clean code perspective, but also um, out of the perspective of having a performant app. I completely forgot to show you that it works this way. So let me just demonstrate that um, after the, uh, the refactoring, so this was the way that looked before. So after the refactoring, it's still going to look the exact same. So we're still having um, the same result with this centralized service generator. All right, and as you can see, the result is the exact same. So just quickly reviewing that we using the service generator now to create our GitHub client. In the service generator, we have everything um, static. So it's the exact same instance for the entire app, um, except the public um, create service method, which is the only thing you can call. And then you can create, for example, a GitHub client. Um, and that's the way to centralize retrofits uh, creation. Now there is more things to it. For example, if you want to add logging um, or authentication interceptors to here, that's something you also do in the service generator. It's a little bit depending on the use case. Um, so I can't show you one perfect version of the service generator because every app is going to have a slightly different version. Nevertheless, I want to show you in the next part how to add logging to this um, because a lot of people are using logging. So let me do that and I will catch you right back here. All right, now we're going to focus on the service generator itself. The integration with the main activity worked. So let's move this to a constant because I don't really like it where it is right now. And say base URL. I think that's a little bit nicer. And let's make it private. All right, that looks better. Now what we want to do is uh, actually add logging. So for logging, you will need a, an OK, OK HTTP interceptor, which intercepts every request and then logs it. Um, and that is uh, provided by OK HTTP. Um, we have a complete own tutorial on providing logging um, to Retrofit. I will link that in the description below, um, but the short version will come here now. So what we need for that is a logging interceptor. And again, there is a dependency for that, so you can just import that. I'm just going to call, uh, let's say, logging interceptor. It's a nicer name. And we just need a new instance of it. And let's set the logging level. Again, if that's confusing, um, we have the tutorial where we go in more detail about this stuff. Um, so we have the logging interceptor, now we need to set it to the OK HTTP. Um, client. Now we get an OK HTTP client through the builder. So we need a builder. And this should be OK HTTP client builder. All right. Now, obviously, Retrofit doesn't use that builder, uh, this uh, OK HTTP client yet. So we have to set that. And we can do that by using the builder up here to build a new retrofit instance. But pre before that, set the OK HTTP client. So what we're going to do is we're going to set builder and we're going to set the client to the client builder. And obviously we have to call build. And we forgot to make these two static. 
since we're in a static method. Now we set the retroput, so we're going to create a new retroput object here, which mm, I'm not super happy with this code right now. So let's make this this way. Yeah, I think this looks nicer. So what's happening here is we use the retrofit builder. We're going to customize it with a custom OK HTTP client. And then we're going to create a retrofit instance from that builder. Now this OK HTTP client here doesn't have the logging set yet. So we also need to customize that. So we're going to create the, we're going to add an intercept to it. Right now, when this method gets called, we uh, add an interceptor to OKHTTP. OK we add this OKHTTP OK um, custom instance to retrofit. And then all the calls uh, we do with this retrofit instance will have the logging interceptor enabled. Now, there is one problem here, and that is that we ruined all of the progress we made earlier. Whenever we create a new service, we're going to create a new build, we're going to create a new retrofit instance. So all of the performance gain we just had um, is ruined again. And we also want to get rid of that. So we want to have an efficient way of doing that. The easy way to do this is to just check if this OK HTTP client already has an interceptor set or not. So if we do um, let me quickly look at my notes. All right, so when we call this method, we check if there is an OKHTTP OK client which has a logging interceptor in it. If it does not, only then we go into these three lines. Since everything is static, um, it will stay the exact same throughout the lifecycle of the app, and we will only jump once in this code. And all the following um, calls will completely ignore this if statement and go directly down here with the logging enabled. So let me execute uh, the app one more time and I can show you that it still works. All right, here we go. We still have the content of our app working um, just like before. Great. And of course we should also, if you go back to Lockhead, let me here make this a little bit bigger so you can see let's make a debug and now this is pretty big um, because github gives a giant um, json back but you can also see the logging here so the logging works as well um, just like we wanted to all right so in this video you have seen how you can create a sustainable retro client um, for performance gains for clean code gains and also a demo of how you can customize it in this case with logging Please do this, don't copy and paste the retrofit instance code back and forth. It's much better if you have one central place where you create the retrofit instance um, and share the same instance throughout the entire app. If you've learned something, please give this video a like, it will help us a lot, and subscribe for more videos. Enjoy coding and make it rock.